When I first came into Parliament, my office got a number of phone calls from people, people who'd suffered child sexual abuse themselves, often at the hands of an institution. Pretty early on, I realised that there weren't any politicians in New South Wales actually looking at this, and there were very few journalists or others interested in the story. But there was one woman up in Newcastle, an amazingly courageous journalist called Joanne McCarthy. I've been working on issues relating to child sexual abuse within institutions, starting with the Catholic Church since 11 years ago this week. It is unbelievably important to have um, politicians, um, even one, as we did have with David, as we do have with David Shoebridge in Parliament. I'm in a powerful position as a journalist. David's in a powerful position as an MP. And then it just depends on how do you use that power. You have to sort of believe that what you're doing is right. And I think that's what drives David as well. He knows that if he drops the ball, um, then who's there? In 2012, we decided to have a public meeting and it was co-sponsored between the Newcastle Herald and my office. And the question we were asking is, do we need a Royal Commission to look into institutional abuse? And I got a message that this police officer called Peter Fox wanted to speak. Towards the, uh, the last decade of my career, I'd personally been involved in a number of cases with uh, respect to the Catholic Church and uh, the abuse of children. The thing is, I had no idea before uh, I spoke out that I was going to do it. Really, there'd been very little, if any, action right across the nation in relation to addressing that. Uh, my view was if the cover-up uh, wasn't as extensive as it had been, uh, the problem would have been able to be addressed, that is the actual abuse of the children by uh, clergy. And he said, do we need a Royal Commission? Too bloody right we need a Royal Commission. Having watched the situation um, over the last two decades, um, the failure of the church to address the problem of uh, child abuse, and um, the media of course picked up on that, and the more it, um, it sort of started rolling and, uh, and snowballing, and. When David spoke about that in Parliament, um, it resonated with me. Um, I remember that was probably a year or so before I spoke out, but I thought, well, um, there is a bigger issue and people are asking why isn't it being addressed. It was a spark that led, in a matter of months, to Julia Gillard calling the Royal Commission. We were both almost speechless. It was quite funny because we just sat there sort of like, oh my God, it's happened. And the phone kept ringing and ringing and ringing with victims and supporters calling the office, often in tears. This was the chance, they thought, the chance finally to hold these institutions to account. It, it was very important. I was, I was absolutely overjoyed. Everyone was saying it would never happen. And then all of a sudden it was there and it was, um, it was a real moment of celebration. It is incredibly important to people who are on the receiving end of abuse by powerful interests to have powerful voices in other institutions. That's when you actually need MPs who are willing to actually stand up and be a voice. Powerful institutions stay powerful, like churches, because they have powerful friends, they're part of a powerful network. They're seen alongside politicians. So for a politician to actually step outside that, as David has done, and stand with survivors and be a really powerful advocate for them is essential. David's support has been there right throughout. He's allowed a lot of people, such as myself, to network with others that has proved fairly uh, important to the overall uh, issue of child sexual abuse within uh, institutions. David's support has, has been wonderful and it's been exceptional because as far as I know, he has been the main member of parliament and politician that's um, really supported um, victims of sexual abuse. What happens after the Royal Commission hands over its report, what happens after that is when we're really going to need advocacy and um, because then we're entering the interesting field of it's up to politicians to actually enact these royal recommendations. The fight's never over. Uh, there's been lots of recommendations from lots of Royal Commissions, including the Wood, Wood Royal Commission, um, that never get acted upon. That's when we're going to need the most powerful advocacy. That is where we're going to need somebody like David who really is across the issues and whose perspective is that of the survivors. It's up to all the people involved in, in these areas to keep on to their political members, their members of parliament. When I think of all the work I do as an MP, it's those conversations with those citizens of courage and bravery, they're the things you remember.
but I have no doubt that uh, a lot of the recommendations from this Royal Commission will have flow on benefits in those situations. Julia Gillard did make the comment before the uh, Royal Commission got underway that it would be nation changing. Um, I have no doubt whatsoever that it has been nation changing already even before the recommendations are handed down. It's one thing to know what's right to do. It's another thing to persuade a majority of our parliamentarians to do it. That's the job of Greens MPs. You have a responsibility to ensure the rights of those people who are not at the top of the pile, those people who aren't, you know, in a position to abuse their power. The whole way Australian society looks at this, survivors and those that have been abused as children are much more prepared now to come forward. Uh, we can see that in over 2,000 cases being referred by the Royal Commission to the various police forces and uh, there's still 1,900 of those, uh, which sounds appalling, yet to be investigated properly. It is important because it brings it into a public arena and people are more prepared to listen and discuss and believe the issues around sexual abuse. We need to have politicians in our state and federal parliaments who are going to stand by the victims and insist upon the recommendations being legislated. In many ways, the work has just begun.